video, I'm going to be putting, uh, I'm going to be talking about um, adding, um, glazing these. I did um, a video last week on value, and I wanted to also, and I had mentioned that I was going to do a second part, so I, I want to get that finished and do that one. But I want to ask you, oh, I wanted, my dad had said that who he's an avid watcher, avid supporter. He just turned 94. Dad, hi, I love you. Um, he's someone in my family that watches my videos and a lot of my family doesn't. They're very busy, but I know dad, you do. And he said the last, um, couple videos, he wasn't getting, uh, notified. And so he told me one, I needed to tell you all to subscribe. If I don't ask for it, then, like my dad said, there's some people that are so busy, they don't even think about going in there and subscribing or putting the bell on or doing a thumbs up or, or you know, uh, but I'm asking. When I see that my videos aren't being spread out there, it's discouraging to me. But anyway, we're going to talk about glazing. And glazing is a way, uh, you know, there's different ways you can look at it, but it is a way, one, of bringing the painting together. Glazing is done with um, how I do it is I do a very transparent paint and I mix a little bit of a medium. Uh, I don't do water per se, but I do a medium and it can be like, um, you know, light glazing or a, um, you know, satin medium or so, some liquidy medium. And then I lightly go over, like on this one, you can either go over, well, let me show you. Let me get the other one. This one I would do a sky on, but this one, say I, I like the painting, but I don't see a cohesiveness in the painting. So what I would do on this one and do, would do um, a uh, um, glossing um, over the entire thing, and I'll, I'll do a demonstration, and it's going to bring all the colors together. And this one, it, it, another um, glazing, not glossing, another technique you can do is to uh, turn the sky blue. And it, it helps bring some different colors into the painting. So there's a couple things that you can do um, with glazing that are very helpful techniques. And so that's what I'm going to show you over on the other table. Um, if you've seen my videos in my art room, I do have several cam cameras set up. This one is if I do a larger painting or when I'm talking to you. And then I have an overhead one that comes straight down on the paintings, and that's what I'm going to go to next. So, hang on. I'm going to switch to the other camera. Okay, I am over here. I'm at my art table, and what I'm showing you is just um, several of the boards that I'm going to do the demonstration on. And again, I'm using glazing medium. And I'm going to be using um, either high flows or the fluid from Golden. They, to me, work the best. These are hard boards. And this one I had done a while back. And it really is beautiful as it is. I, I could sell it like that or I could add a glazing. And I'm going to go ahead and show you. These are some of the black and white that I had done. That is um, some cheesecloth I have up there. I've embedded in, in there. It's beautiful. And then there's a, a dragonfly that I've painted and, and, and uh, glued it, adhered it in there. There's another piece of collage I've put in the painting. So these are um, paintings that I've scratched into, I've painted, but I want to add something additional to them. They're great as they are, but if you want to add some uh, color to them without painting them, this is just a really great technique. So I'm going to start with this one. And this one is just one that is, um, like I said, I could leave it as it is. It's, it's um, you know, to me, I feel that it needs some harmonization. But 
I could leave it. I'm there's the glazing medium, and uh, it's going to be it needs to be a transparent paint. See the line on there? It's if you can see the color through the three lines, and golden is great because they give you that little um, identification on the front of the bottle. That bottle is that's the color I'm going to use, but you can't see because I cover it up with paint. Um, but there's another one you can see where you can see the color through the uh, black lines. That means it's transparent. And that's a Cranacodum Nickel Azo Gold, and that's a beautiful color. Um, that's um, one of the ones I love to use when I mix it with maybe some blues and some greens and things like that. It just like, we're going to harmonize the whole painting is what we're going to do on this one. So... I decided on this one, I'm going to use the green gold. So I pour out some of the glazing medium and some people use water. I, I just feel that using the glazing medium gives it a more of a um, structure, conditioning structure. Um, I just prefer not to use water. Um, it's just preference or you can do your research as to um, why you may or may not use water but the pigments of the goldens are so pigmented that you don't have to use a lot of color and so i'm going to mix the glazing medium um with that paint and it it keeps the color the pigment it doesn't take away white paint of course would make that lighter but this keeps the um the value of of the color so um, I'm going to decide where on that painting um, I'm going to add and I'm using a paper towel and I'm just blending it into the entire painting. I could have stopped up at the top. It's just a preference thing. It's where you might want the color. And um, you can add this lightly. You can add this uh, in a more heavy fashion. Um, you can uh, rub some of it back and you will see me rub this back in, in a couple areas to tone it down. The reason why I don't use a baby wipe is a baby wipe has like a cleanser in it and it would um, it would take more of the paint away than, than a, a paper towel. So I'm adding some water here, <coughs> excuse me, so I can go in and just remove some of the paint. It's not going to remove all of it, which is what you need, and you can always go back like I did and add some more. Now this was a green gold I had already used in the painting, so um, that's why I liked adding the same green gold um, in a glazing fashion to this painting and it gives it just enough of a tinge to bring all the colors together and this is one if you're having trouble blending the entire painting you can do this technique you can glaze your painting and it just harmonizes all the colors together I'm going in and adding a little bit more So sometimes the glazing color dries for me a little darker on some of the colors. So keep that in mind. So we're going to pick a, a black and white. Um, now this has some blue skies. So I could either just do the bottom. I could do the top. I could choose um, a couple different blues and add more clouds up there. This is a technique. So instead of using um paint to do add green as the bottom of this landscape i'm using this glaze which gives it a very much of a lighter color so it doesn't take away from the actual painting one thing to note is i did not spray this down with the fixative and those are graphite markings so some of those graphite markings are going to um smear a little bit so you're going to it all depends on what you want what you, what what you like in your art but on this one if you did not want those graphite markings to 
smear, you could have sprayed it. That's cerulean blue, and again, you can see the black lines through it, so it is a transparent. And there's an ultramarine blue that's also pretty, but um, I'm choosing the cerulean blue. Now, this is pretty just as it is after adding some of the green in the bottom. Um, I could have left this, and it was just as pretty, but I wanted to do the demonstration for you, so I'm going to go ahead and add some blue up there into the sky area. Again, it takes the place of, of painting, and um, you can um, put in as much as you want, as little as you want, and it just gives it a very light, light coating. And there I accidentally got my paper towel dipped in the green and um, so I'm going to have to put water on that. This kind of just shows you it's a happy accident of how to just remove um, when you've made a mistake. And that's when I accidentally got a little bit of the um, graphite smeared. So I'm getting another paper towel. I'm going to get a clean one. That's why the table's shaking. I have it too close to my main table, but I'm adding it in and I'm looking to paper towel to see if I accidentally dipped it in um, the green again. And again, you can add as little or as much as you want and it just gives a, um, you know, very beautiful additional light there. I got a little bit of that green in there. I guess that green wants to go in there. So maybe it wants, the cloud wants to reflect the the um, green grass. I don't know. Sometimes when accidents happen, you go with it. So um, it didn't take away from the painting and I left it. So I added a little bit more. I turned it upside down to make it a little bit easier for me to paint. Um, I found it a little um, it's a stretch there. I have the camera far enough ahead, so my head doesn't keep bobbing in, so I'm having to stretch. So I'm adding a little bit more. I'm picking the different areas that I want to add the blue in. And um, going in and um, subtracting and adding. And you can tell this is not, this is so much easier for me than painting. If I had paint there without the glaze, um, it's... You can do it, but it wasn't as controllable for me when I decided to go ahead and do this. So I'm adding in a couple birds, more charcoal. Again, you're going to have to spray that with a fixative. But I'm just going in. You can draw more on top. But I'm just, um, there is a, a white graphite. So I can link that below the, the um, brand of that. But um, many times I'll go in with white. But there's, you can tell there's a piece of paper there that is an addition. Um, so I'm writing on paper there. But it just, um, my landscapes are very um, abstract. So having writing in my landsca la landscapes are, are perfect. And here's another one. Um, I could totally leave this as it is. I uh, love black and white, but I wanted to do the demonstration for you. Again, this is another hard board, and I do have up there in the left-hand corner a piece of uh, paper that I hand-painted with dots. I do have a little graphite a bird up there. And in the black paint, I have scratched through when it was wet down to the white. So I'm using um, a different color. I think I'm using the, yeah, I'm using an ultramarine blue from Golden. And I moved it over a little bit so you could see it. And same thing, I'm using the, um, well, maybe that's still the cerulean blue. Maybe I use the ultramarine in the next one. But I'm just popping some in with my um, brush. And then um, I, st I like to I still go back with the uh, paper towel. It seems to rub in more. So it's just a very, very light addition blue. And there again, I got a little bit of the um, graphite smeared. So you just have to be cognizant of you know, at what point you're going to spray that down. I um, always have to end up using my fingers. So 
So some spots I'm putting more, some spots I'm leaving white or rubbing out. It's a preference thing. It's your it's your painting, so it's a preference. So there, I'm rubbing a little bit more, dabbing it into it, just giving it a little texture. This, this one just getting a tinge of the blue. Some of the marks that I had in the painting up in the sky, when I added the blue, it um, it went into the crevices. And so when I wiped the paper towel over top, it didn't wipe that out. So you can see right up there where I just pointed it, um, the blue embeds itself, which just gives it another texture. Now this is one where I have the painted dragonfly that I have, um, glued in with gel i have the cheesecloth up there which gives a lot of texture and i just take um burlap or that could be a piece of burlap right either cheesecloth burlap or something and you just like pull it apart so it's very loose i love the little strings kind of um spreading out and hanging there and so that's going to give it um a little more of a texture some of the paint's going to go down into the crevice and if I were to go in with water and dab it up, it will um, look a little bit um, different. But if I leave, um, well, I'm doing the bottom, I guess, first in a very, it, that's um, Cranacronum magenta. I think I'm saying that right. Still use the gloss the glazing medium and this one does have a lot of texture on it um, with scratches so a lot of the scrapes and scratches that have a little crevice it's going to go down deeper into those crevices and it's just another technique you can use so that's a Cranacronum Nickel Azo Gold that I'm putting out on my palette too, looking at. So when I'm adding the glazing to when you have paper on there, if I haven't sprayed it, because I painted these right before I did the demo, if I hadn't sprayed it, sometimes the paper is going to stain. Um, and once it dries, it may be a little harder to pull up the color. So keep that in mind. So you may want to pull the color up off of your paper before you let it dry. But in my case, I was fine. Um... I am a very, I go with the flow on my paintings. I don't worry too much. And um, I just enjoy the process. Okay, so this is the nickel, um, the, let's see, the nickel azo gold instead of a blue sky. And uh, this is a, it's just a beautiful color that I'm adding that in to give it kind of like a sunset looking. And again, when it goes over that, that um, cheesecloth or burlap or whatever it is, it's going down into the crevices. And you can either dab down in it or leave it. it depends on how much you want um, the crevices. It makes that um, addition of that cloth there or that burlap or whatever it is I've added there to stand out. Now I'm adding just maybe the sun setting or sun rising with a little bit of the pink um, or the magenta on the horizon. So again, I could have left these black and white. 
or I could go in with um, this type of a technique to glaze into the painting depends on you know what you want or I could have gone in and pulled a lot of that up and left it um, a lot um, very muted like it's just a touch of the the gold and the um, magenta Again, I'm going back in, adding some more graphite, making my bird a little more pronounced. That bird got a little smeared up there, but I'm okay with that. Adding in some white graphite, um, defining the, the bird or the dragonfly, adding some more scrofito. It's a total preference of what you want in your art. Scrofito and scratches and lines are all part of my mark making that I like so I will always I will always use that uh, in my artwork you will find your own unique marks that are unique to you I've done several videos on personalizing your your markings so I'm calling this one done And on this one, I go in and I'm showing, I'm going to show you how I finish it. I may have done that on the other painting, but I'm adding, this is black gesso. You can either use black paint. Uh, black gesso is a little more expensive, but I love the quality of a black gesso. And these edges are a little rougher. I have sanded them down. Um, you could go in and sand some more. So when you... Um, so some of the times when I'm putting that black gesso on, you'll see that it doesn't, um, I may have to rub a little harder for it to get into some, it's, it's, it's a wooden board. So it's a total preference thing, how smooth you want your edges. And then I, um, I showed you in one of the past videos, um, how I finished the back. If not, I'll show you on this one. But I finish these. You could do this in white. You could leave it raw wood. It's, it's, again, all a preference. I could have done the top part white and the bottom part black. Depends on what you want as, as an artist, how you work. Um, I tend to do my sides all the same color. And I tend to either use black, white, or even a gray neutral um, gesso for my sides. Sometimes on the white, it will be white paint, but I do um, a lot of gesso. So you can see my head in there where I'm pulling one of the ones where I show you that is a sawtooth hanger and you just uh, nail it on. That's a very easy way. You can frame them, but um, that's a very easy way to add a little nail. Of course, if these go in a gallery, you'd have to frame them, but um, for your own use or selling, um, I like it just like this. Well, I'm going in on this one and adding a little more of the sunrise look. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you enjoyed um, me changing this over, doing a little demonstration on glazing. Glazing has its place and purpose. And um, I think if you just sit down and think about it there's a lot of times you can use glazing and again a lot of artists will use it to harmonize all the colors on the painting um, they will use it to maybe paint a sky because it's a very light color um, it's a lightly done um, type of a technique it's got a lot of versatility you can rub it out so it's um, it's a fun technique and I hope you try it and again dad I'm listening to you I would love um, a thumbs up, um, a comment. Just tell me that you are here with me or just leave a comment and say hi. That would be great. Um, and then make sure you subscribe. There's uh, still a handful that, that aren't subscribed. Let YouTube know that um, my videos are worth putting out there so that I can grow. And I would really love that. Um, so I know to, 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 to continue to do these. I love to help other artists um, 
again it's a lot of work it's a lot of time it is a lot of money keeping up on the supplies and um i don't make money with youtube i maybe make a dollar a day and that pays for some of the supplies i use so i'm happy for that but um you can help me out by supporting me by um doing that the thumbs up the bell the those are all things that shows youtube that i'm a channel that is worth promoting and sharing out there so those are the things i'd love for you to do for me anyway um i hope you enjoyed this and um until we meet again thank you